In this tutorial video, we're going to look at expressing the sum of two trigonometric expressions, sine and cos, in a single compound trig expression. So this question asks us to express 24 sine theta plus 7 cos theta in that form there. In the form R sine of theta plus alpha. Well, in these situations, what we need to do is expand this. Now, it doesn't expand like traditional brackets. It's not r sine theta plus r sine alpha. We need to use the compound angle formulae, which are in your formula book or formula sheet, which is either given separately in some exam boards or at the front of the exam paper in the OCR exam board. So let's expand it. So that becomes r times. And if we look at the formula sheet, we see that that's sine theta cos alpha plus cos theta sine alpha and multiplying that out further we get r sine theta cos alpha plus r cos theta sine alpha and this bit's the tricky part so if we are to express this in this form then this here must be equal to that there they're exactly the same, we've expanded it, so this is equivalent to this. So it must also be equivalent to what we're trying to show. So this sine theta here has been times by 24, and this sine theta here has been times by r cos alpha. If these two parts of the expression are truly equal, then 24 must equal that r cos alpha. So r cos alpha equals 24, let's write that down. We're gonna call that equation A. Similarly, here, the cos theta has been times by 7. Here, the cos theta has been times by r sine alpha. So the r sine alpha, if they're to be equal, must be 7. Now, this bit here, what I'm going to do is square both equations to give r squared cos squared alpha equals 24 squared and r squared sine squared alpha equals seven squared. So I'm gonna call that equation a squared and equation b squared. Adding them together, left hand side added together, r squared cos squared alpha plus r squared sine squared alpha equals 24 squared plus seven squared. That's equation a squared plus b squared. We've squared them and added them together. With a little bit of factorising, we see that r squared, taking out a factor of r squared there, r squared cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha equals 24 squared plus 7 squared, which if we add that together is equal to 625. And notice that this bit here is just equal to 1. So r squared equals 625 which means that r equals the square root of 625 equals 25 so what we've done there will prove why the method works but actually in an exam we can get a cheeky mark for just writing r equals the square root of the squares of these two numbers and that will work every time in an exam equals 25 so actually this is all a very good proof, but it's acceptable just to write this line here to get this mark in an exam, to get r, simply the square root of the squares of those two numbers, much like Pythagoras. Right, moving on to finding alpha. Well, notice that if we do equation b divided by equation a, that there, on the left-hand side, we get r sine alpha over r cos alpha and on the right hand side we get 7 over 24 the r's cancel r divided by r is just 1 and notice that sine alpha over cos alpha is tan alpha remember on your trig identities 7 over 24 therefore alpha equals the inverse tan of 7 over 24 so the inverse tan of 7 over 24 
which is equal to 16.3 degrees, 16.3 degrees to three significant figures. So in an exam, let's have a look at the bare minimum that you need to write, what would make an ideal exam answer. Well, how I would tackle this as an exam question, as soon as I look at it, I'd write R equals the square root of the squares of the two numbers, 24 squared plus 7 squared, putting in my calculator, that'll give me 25. And instantly, that's a mark, just for writing that. Now the rest of it, 24 sine theta plus 7 cos theta, expanding the trig identity, I get R sine theta cos alpha plus 7 cos theta uh, plus R cos theta sine alpha. From that, I can deduce that R cos alpha equals 24. R sine alpha equals 7. Therefore, tan alpha equals 7 24ths. Dividing this equation by this equation, which means that alpha equals the inverse tan of 7 24ths which is 16.3 degrees. So this here, a proof of why it all works, but this here, what I expect to see written in an exam to get all of the marks. For more videos like this and some categorised exam resources, please go to alevelmathsrevision.com.